What's up everybody? It's your boy Walker Mondu. Welcome back to Ranch Trench Garage. And today we have we have the Xterra in the shop. This one is my wife's car and maintenance is due. It hit 100,000 miles, which you've probably seen on my Harbor Freight $75 uh, uh, challenge video. You probably saw that and it hit 100,000 miles. So it's time to do some maintenance on it. Uh, first things I noticed is that uh, she had a problem with this back tire back here. And uh, basically, after I took the tire off and uh, fixed the tire, I noticed that these rear brakes were really, really low. So we're going to go and do the rear brakes. We're going to go ahead and inspect the front brakes right here. And since it's at 100,000 miles, we're probably going to do a tune-up that probably won't happen tonight because all the stores are closed. Thanks, coronavirus. And uh, I'm not going to be able to get to that today, so that'll probably be sometime in the morning. And um, my job is probably not going to be happy with that because I did call out, and I don't care who knows it. So. With that being said, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get started there. Um, we're just going to also check the belts down here. We're just because at 100,000 miles, I don't know when the last time those belts were changed. So you can kind of see down there. So a couple of these uh, intake things are definitely going to have to come off so I can inspect the belt properly. And uh, yeah, we're just going to go from there. So uh, there you go, guys. We're going to go ahead and get this thing on some jack stands. And we're going to, I'll get back to you when we start getting into this thing and we start. Uh, getting to the inspection itself. So I will see you guys in just a bit. Oh, by the way, Tiggy G's here. Peace. <laughs> All right, y'all. All right, guys, so we're back. And what we're doing right now is we are doing the oil change for this, uh, for this Nissan Xterra. And this particular model, this is a 09. And for this particular model, Techie Genius over here has saved us a whole bunch of trouble by discovering something I never discovered because I always used to take, as you can see, there's this whole skid plate down here. And I used to take this whole skid plate off, wrestle it off, and then wrestle it right back on uh, to get to this thing. But what we've discovered is that there is, there's this little uh, observation panel here where if you just take one bolt off, loosen the other, and throw it to the side, right here, can I see that flash? Mm -hmm. Right up in there, there's a little ramp. I'm gonna point my finger to it right here. There's this little ramp, and right above that little ramp, you can see, there's the oil filter. Now, I used to take this whole thing off thinking that this little hole wasn't big enough for my big stupid hands, but uh, Techie G has proved me wrong and said, yeah, yeah, you can put your big old Philly, big old sausage fingers in there, and uh, you can pull that out of there. So, what you'll need is you'll need a 10 millimeter ratchet to take this little bolt off, and uh, pretty much nothing else, and then you just need maybe a smaller hand, or even if you've got big hands, you might be able to reach in there, and then just unscrew that thing, and Nissan was smart enough to make a little metal ramp so that all the oil drips right down and out and then uh, doesn't make so much of a mess. Now, it's not perfect, so I think you might get some oil caught in there, but, I mean, not a bad idea. So, yeah, so we're gonna, so Tegan G's gonna go ahead and finish uh, pulling that out. Uh, we've already taken a 14 millimeter, 14 millimeter socket and took out the, the drain bolt, so the oil's draining. And just so you guys know, this takes five W30. Well, I'm using high mileage because this vehicle has over 100,000 miles for the 15th time. So, yeah, I'm gonna leave this to the devices and then uh, I'll keep going when we discover anything else. So, there you go, guys. We're back here with the brakes as well. And you can see that the brake rotor, actually it looks like it's in really good shape. But you can see that brake pad's really low. So we're gonna have to change all these pads all the way around. That shock is probably going to have to get replaced sometime in the future because it is looking really, really rusty. So, uh, probably some rust reformer. I wish I had some now. I'd probably spray this thing down. But for now, uh, we're just going to make sure all the maintenance is right on it. We managed to get the uh, fuel filter loose, so we're draining. It's draining right out, ain't it? No mess, huh? So, it's draining right out of there like it's supposed to. So, yeah, sorry this isn't the tutorial like a, like the Tundra was, but we're just kind of trying to get through this because we just need things done. And I just decided to pick up a camera and bring you guys along. But, yeah, it's moving out pretty good. The brakes do need to be changed. They're really, 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 yeah, they're really about nothing there. So I'm going to go ahead and start pulling this off. So with the brakes, you're going to need a 14 millimeter for that bolt there. 
And uh, if I were to do the rotors, I believe that is a 17 or 18 millimeter back here. But we're just going to do the pads. We're not doing the rotors today. Um, rotors actually look good. So, all right, we're going on with it. See you guys later. Yeah, Tuggy G, what are you doing there? Greasing up this, uh, the seal on the filter. Ah, so uh, yeah. there you go, guys. Make sure you put a little bit of oil on the, on the oil filter seal so that uh, you get a good seal whenever you do this. All right, so uh, the Xterra's brakes are two-piston calipers, which is pretty cool. And um, what I ended up doing is taking these old crusty brackets off, put some new shiny ones. You go with this one here, and you just snap these on in. And then once those are snapped into place, you can go ahead and stick your, uh, stick your pads in there. But this one I might have to hold because it's not snapping like it's supposed to. So, all right. So uh, I can't hold the camera and do this. So, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna or, or put you on the tripod or something. All right. So what were you saying, Tiger G? You were saying uh, you're going from the side to tighten up the, uh, yeah, the it's oil still, filter. Yeah, going in through the middle. Yeah, this middle might cut your arm up. You can just go in through the side. There's a lot of room here, and you can tighten it up this way. You see the oil filter's right there if you're going in from the side. Perfect shot of that right there. And then you can just put his hand in there, and then he can just tighten it from the side. And then uh, you don't have any issues. So yeah, there's your observation tunnel right there, right where we're showing you. And then right back there, there is the oil filter. So there you go, guys. All right, so back to this guy. Uh, you can see that this bad boy did snap into place. I just had it in the wrong area. So both of these just simply snap into place, and then you can go and put your pads on there. I'm not changing the rotor because the rotor has plenty of life. It's nice and smooth. It's not miscolored, you know, or anything like that. So the rotor's actually in really good shape. So I'm just gonna go and slide the pads on there like, like they're supposed to be. Um, there is these little indicators right here on these pads. These ones actually came with it on there. Usually they come in the pouch and you got to put them on, but these come with it on there, which is cool. So there you go. All right, guys, I'm all sweaty. Not from the brake job, no. But uh, I've been doing my burpees, so uh, you might want to check it out on Instagram. But if you guys are on my Instagram, you probably see me do some burpees. So uh, I did about 50 so far. I got another 50 to go. 100 burpee challenge. Still some left days left in the month of March. So yeah. So now you know when to timestamp this this setup. But yeah, uh, front brakes are done. They really needed to be done. They were in really, really rough shape. So we got those done. Take a G changed the oil. That was awesome. And uh, tomorrow I'm gonna go to the store and I'm gonna grab some plugs, uh, some the plugs, the plug boots, and then I'm gonna go ahead and change that belt down in there. I did see some imperfections on that belt, but man, this thing lasted uh, over 100,000 miles, and I believe that's the original belt from Nissan. So you go Nissan. I'm definitely going to get another Nissan belt. But uh, yeah, so next move, we're going to go ahead and start uh, getting the rear brakes done, and then uh, that'll be it till tomorrow. So I'll see you guys later. All right, guys, so uh, we're done with the Xterra. The brakes are done on the front and the back. Those, bra those back brakes were in horrible condition. I really kind of wish I had filmed a little bit of that, but you know what? It's just brakes, same thing all the way around. Um, we're going to be getting into the tune-up. The tune-up is going to be happening tomorrow, so... Um, Stay tuned for that. We're going to be pulling all the plugs out, changing the plug boots. Uh, as you see, the awesome part about this is that this has a k and air filter in there. I scrubbed it as much as I could. Um, it's clean-ish. I'll probably try to give it one more once over, maybe uh, use a power washer on it. But yeah, guys, it's coming along. This little uh, tune-up is uh, it's really working pretty well right now. So, there you guys have it. I'll see you guys tomorrow to finish off this video. Oh, say bye, Taggy. Peace. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is about two days down the line. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to get to all my vehicles to do all of the uh, maintenance that I wanted to do. I had to go to work. And uh, now I'm just finally out here on my day off trying to get some things done. But yeah, so uh, we're going to do the oil change right here for the Tundra. And uh, you guys, if you haven't seen my oil change video, I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. One, one of these, one, I forgot which side, but one of these sides, I'm going to go ahead and put a little tag there where you guys can click on the video where I do a full oil change tutorial on this uh, vehicle. Uh, you guys should watch it. It's pretty in-depth and because uh, I'm just going to do the oil change here. I'm not going to do any kind of filming of that. But uh, what I did also discover is that 
I decided to give the brakes a quick little look just to see what I can see through the through the wheel here and uh, honestly I'm not liking what I'm seeing now I have another video that I'll probably link somewhere maybe at the end of this video I'll go ahead and link the other video that um, where I did the brakes on this vehicle and as you can see there are some pretty significant grooves in the front brake rotor and I'm gonna look on this side it's been about two years since I've done that so I just decided like once a year to take a look but uh, it's actually been two years and you can see there is some grooving and things going on in there that I don't really like about these brakes so I'm gonna go ahead and get some more rotors and I'm gonna go ahead and replace the pads as well now the back ones the back ones actually look actually look really smooth they're really good there's not a real lip on that thing up there I've felt them with my finger you can't really snatch your fingernail on it they look pretty good and I know those are the rear brakes don't wear out nowhere near as fast as the front for the front brakes I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, and change these rotors and pads so now the only other problem is is that I went to the store the other day to check on the warranty of these rotors that I that I got it's a two-year warranty and the warranty ran out about three days ago so now I gotta buy more rotors and they are not cheap they're like 89 bucks so I'm I'm not happy about that but I have to change them I don't really like the way those look and uh, I can probably go get them turned I can probably go somewhere to get them turned uh, which might be the other option because you can probably turn them for like 40 bucks but we're gonna see um, buying a new set would just kind of guarantee that every two years I can just swap them out uh, I could probably do that with the warranty and lifetime warranty on the pads so I'm not too worried about the pads The pads I'm just gonna go ahead and swap out uh, lifetime warranty on those unfortunately the store closed I completely forgot about it I forgot that they closed at like 630 uh, now in this modified time so there's really nothing I can do right now but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil since I have all this stuff for the oil change here I'll go ahead and back this out and then I'm going to uh, do the brake uh, excuse me I'm gonna do the belt and the spark plug tune-up for the uh, Xterra which I have all the parts for that right here right I have all the parts for the Xterra tune-up uh, so I've been looking around online about doing the uh, tune-up on the Xterra since I've never done a tune-up on that thing yet it's a hundred thousand miles just now and I don't really I haven't really done one and I wanted to see if I had to take off the intake or anything there's some places that say yes go ahead and take off the intake it'll be easier access but then you have to replace the gasket and then there is another video that I saw where the guy actually did the uh, did the did the tune up did the um did the spark plugs without taking the plenum off he used you know various swivels and things like that i'm going to try to link that in the description as well so uh let's go ahead and see how far i can get i'm going to see if i have enough uh tools tiny fitting tools to get around that plenum without having to take it off because i can't get to the store to get another gasket so <sighs> wish me luck guys all right guys so i finished the uh, oil change and right now i'm just kind of looking at these two air filters and of course that's the new one here and that's the old one there and uh you can tell the difference side by side that this one's definitely dirtier than the other one but i've seen them so much worse so i was kind of contemplating whether or not i actually really wanted to change this thing but you know what they're only a couple of bucks i'm gonna go ahead and change it so yeah i don't know why i made this little video part of it but uh, yeah, I mean, if you got one and it looks like this compared to the other one, just change them. Okay, guys, so I decided to go ahead and just show you guys about the about the, the air filter. I showed you guys the difference between them. This is the dirty one, of course. The clean one is in there, but uh, I figured I might as well show you guys how to change this. Well, basically, there's your intake box right here. It's pretty easy. It's, it's actually very, very easy. So, once again, 2013 Tundra 5.7, ta-da. All right, so right there, you're going to have one, two clips. So from here, you're going to have a few clips. One, two clips there. There's a clip right there. And then there's another clip on this side right there. So you undo one, two, three, four clips. little loop right there. All right, there's a little loop on each one of them. Put your finger on the loop, right here, and flip them all. One, 
two, three. You get all four of those off, simply lift this up after you make sure all of, make sure you get them all, all unhooked. Lift it up and then bam, it's exposed right there. Lift these guys up and this thing will come all the way up, at least high enough. You can see that little accordion thing will bend for you, so that's good. And then you put these in here with the proper louver facing the proper way, it will seat directly down in there correctly. Now if you have it wrong, like if you put it this way, it will not seat. It just will not, you can see, it just looks funky, it will not seat. So, just turn it the proper way, the big part, the big fat part facing down, the slim part facing up, and you can drop that bad boy right into place and she'll fit perfect, okay? Then you put your, put your cover back down, put your cover back down properly, and re-snap. I'm going to go ahead and do the cabin filter. Alright, so getting to the filter to this thing is uh, pretty basic. Basically, this shelf is actually removable, and I'm going to go ahead and remove this shelf. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that, and this guy kind of snaps. snaps out right there. So, you snap out. Just be careful jimmying it out of there so you don't break nothing. So, this guy here slides up, and you can pull that out. These, there's little clips on each side right here. So what you gotta do is you see there's a clip here. You push this in. Let's see if you can see that right there. Pull that out, and then there's another one on the other side. Same thing, and this whole thing comes out. I'll tell you, holding the flashlight and doing this with one hand and everything is difficult, but this shouldn't take long. All right, now once you bring this out, oh yeah, that's pretty, pretty, pretty bad. That's pretty, pretty. Pretty disgusting right there. So yeah, that's my cab that's my cabin air filter after you should always do this after the fall because you are gonna have leaves and crap everywhere. So yeah, it's a good thing I'm doing this now because this one is really really disgusting. Alright, so I went ahead and just threw a vacuum down there real quick just to make sure it got all the crud out of there and one time I started this thing up and there was a leaf stuck in there and it made a really bad noise. I thought I broke something. But make sure there's just nothing stuck down in there because there's a little fan in here and things can get caught in there. You can feel it. Just kind of spin it around. Make sure there's nothing caught up in there. After that, make sure you got your airflow pointed in the right direction. Where it should be pointed, that arrow should be pointing down. And you stick that thing in there like so. And then that's it, man. You just go ahead and start putting your pieces back together. It snaps back into place. Just make sure it snaps in. And then you can go ahead and put your shelf back in. Everything snaps back into place. You're good to go.